She's showing the other. She's hey, showing the oh, other one. Oh, oh, she is. Oh, oh wait. Oh, oh, there she is. I'm just sorry about that, Natalie. I thought I had moved you to the stage. I must have. I was just vibing. To the audience. <laughs> I'm gonna go tell everyone say hi, Natalie. Hello. Hello there. <laughs> yes, I made the we one can be reference. I regret nothing. Take it. Mm-hmm. You guys hear my mic? Yeah. Yep. Cool. <laughs> or gave me a notice that said it was off for us. Now it's back on. So That's why we did new the mic check. Just in case. Yeah, right now, this little animation is setting up over here. Also, hi, Rashi, and the audience. Hope you're doing well. I hope everyone's enjoying their Sunday today. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Kygo Mesh. Welcome. Pretty much got everything set up on my end. Everything good to go on my end. I'm ready when it's about a few minutes. Yep. Once one o'clock hits, we will start. Golden Boots CJ. Kevin, you want to give them like a uh, heads up before we start the panel, just in case? Yeah. I, I will. I will let everyone. I'll let, let everyone know any announcement that we're just starting soon. No, I mean about like any questions about like upcoming stuff. So I want to let people oh, know. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I can do that when I enter the, enter the panel. <laughs> the lightning star. Send them this. There'll be some. Cool. <laughs> the audience, I know some of you guys. I've never been to the symphony, Sonic Symphony. I wish I would come to uh, Arizona. That way I can see uh-huh. it. It's I'll so play fun. one day. You, you went to Sonic Symphony, They're still looking Symphony, for recommendations right? for clothes. There's still a few. Give them enough suggestion for a place. They might, they might put one there. You, you went to Sonic oh. Symphony, right, Natalie? Yeah, I went to the the Chicago one, and then I'm going to be at the, the Cleveland one here in April. Um, oh, I'm actually nice. doing some, some promotional work for them, right? Oh, now. very nice. Yeah, it's already been announced. Okay. <laughs> I still want to go to one. <laughs> <laughs> one more minute, and then yeah, we'll be good to go. All right, and our Kickstarter is now down sixteen thousand two hundred and eighty three with one hundred and fifty backers. Huh? Uh, the Kickstarter is now done. So we raised uh, 16283 with 150 back- backers for the in-person event. All right. We did it. Heck yeah, dude. Awesome. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. Yay. Yay. <laughs> all right. Three. Give me at 3 o'clock if we're all ready. Now we will get to go live now. In 3, 2, 1. One. All right. All right. So, welcome everyone to our Q and A with Natalie Hain, one one of our IDW artists here. Uh, Natalie, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm Natalie Hain. So my pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm an illustrator for the IDW Sonic Comics. Uh, I've also done some work on the IDW My Little Pony comics, um, as well as doing some design work, um, some early preliminary stuff for the the upcoming Monster High series. Um, but yeah, I work as a cover artist and I do interiors as well. So any and everything that involves art, probably done something with it. <laughs> and just a PSA, she is under NDA, so she cannot talk about anything that is not out yet. Um, I, and if, she, if she's not able to talk about any any other thing, uh, she will let, it, let us know. But yeah, uh, Natalie, how did you get started? What got you into drawing and what got you into the comic industry and how did you go to work for IDW? Um, so art in general, I've always been doing art <laughs> for as long as I can remember. Uh, my mom actually went to the same art college that I went to uh, when she was younger. Um, and so I've always been involved in the arts and I've been a Sonic fan my whole life. So I was always following along the comics. Um, and the editor at the time, David Marriott, had made a tweet about like just a vague post about looking for artists. Um, he also worked on other stuff like Transformers for IDW as well as Sonic. Um, but I was like, I'm going to shoot my shot. So I, I sat down on my apartment floor, made a two page comic uh, and sent it to him with a bunch of illustration work. And I was like, I'm available for freelance. And the next day I got an email about it. So it was, it was a really weird way <laughs> to get hired, but there's not really a, a conventional way to do it. Um, but that's kind of how I got involved. So I was, I was just keeping an eye on the, on the people involved that I knew. 
always, always been a uh, comics fan. Okay. Uh, uh, Kurt, would you like to ask you a question? Hmm. All right. So, you know, what inspired you to actually start making Sonic artwork? I grew up playing the games and watching Sonic X when Sonic X was still premiering. Um, nice. I, this, Sonic Adventure 2, my favorite, as always. Um, I, had a, I had a very large family. Um, I'm one of six kids. And so we, video games was one of the, the few things that we all did. Um, so we, we all had our own chow in the chow garden and everything. And we would play the, oh, the two player no. race all the time. So I, I grew up with, with Sonic, <laughs> you know, just playing the games and, and being involved with that. Obviously, I had the Archie comics when those were around. So. And it kind of nice. always been involved with it, but since I've always been drawing, you know, it's just kind of inherent to to start drawing from there. So I used to right. collect the, the comics, and I would I would trace trace the art out of it. So <laughs> <laughs> a lot of traces of uh, some Tracy Yardley art playing around. <laughs> what comic mm-hmm. did you? Yeah, what comic did you enjoy reading growing up? Since you always enjoyed comic. Um, it was it was mostly the Sonic ones. I did read a lot. Once. I did a lot of uh, independent ones from just local artists. Um, you know, I was kind of always involved in the arts world. Um, and so I have a lot of friends or a lot of peer family friends that also made independent comics. Um, so I've got a lot of their stuff for like zine. I have a, a small zine collection, different things like that. Um, so it was a lot, a lot of independent creators. I did a lot of web comics and followed a lot of people like that. I read a few different things, read some Ninja Turtles for a little bit. <laughs> Got to catch up on those ones. <laughs> As a Ninja Turtle fan, I approve. <laughs> no, I have to finish it. Way behind. All right, Chris, would you like to ask the next question? Mm-hmm. Ooh. So, out of all the things, you know, like, for the Sonic art you've made, which one was your favorite and hardest one to draw? The official stuff. I I really like the shadow painting. <laughs> I'm biased to the shadow painting. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't have it actually. That, it's like the one thing I actually don't have. Seeing that here. artwork, yeah, <laughs> seeing that artwork had to have been pretty hard for you, especially drawing that many of them in yeah. one page. I, uh, I can't remember there were like 26 shadows or something on the painting. It was uh, it was for uh, issue 59. It was the B variant. Um, and I actually right. pitched it to them. Like, I've always wanted to do a mock Renaissance painting because I'm very, like, traditionally inspired. I love Renaissance art. Um, it's one of the things that got me into making art. And I was like, of nice. course I want to do that for a Sonic comic. Like, that's hysterical. Why wouldn't I? And when, when right. I got the synopsis for that issue, I was like, oh, no, I've got a perfect idea. And I gave it to uh, the editors of the time were David and Riley. I, I gave them the idea and they were like... That sounds like an awful idea. <laughs> that sounds like Let's it would it. be too much work. Don't do it. And I was like, it's too late. I already started. <laughs> so I, I that, was that one was, it was a lot of obviously technicality that went into it, but I, I also had the most fun with it. So it was, it was the most challenging in terms of getting it done. And obviously with something that's traditional, uh, when you get notes, it's a lot harder to fix it. So like if the editors had notes or if Sega had notes, um, I would actually have to mm-hmm. go to the painting and fix it and then re-scan it in. Um, but it actually wasn't too bad. Luckily, they, they didn't have a lot of a lot of critiques on that one, which was nice. I was I went in super worried about it, but that one was, was hey, probably at the least most it was worth it. It was, <laughs> it was worth it. <laughs> oh, for yeah, sure. Were. <laughs> I'd love to do some more paintings for, for covers and stuff in the future. Yeah, hey, I'll be looking forward to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know I've got a um, on the canvas over here that's like the same size that one so maybe some what goes into making a cover for, for the comic how, how did how did that work for, for those that don't, don't know what was i'm sorry i missed the beginning of it i'm sorry what goes into making a, a cover for for the comic uh, what from from start to finish how, how did that work yeah so usually you're contacted by whichever editor um and they say hey we need this in this time frame for this amount of money. So like we need a cover for this issue. Can you do it? Yes or no? Um, obviously, and if you say yes, they usually for the covers are done actually a lot earlier in the process than the interiors and everything. Um, so the interiors are actually one of the last things to get finished. So the covers are usually being worked on while the script is being finished. Um, so if you're a cover artist, you're kind of usually given an approved like a breakdown or an outline of the script. It's not the finished script yet. 
um, or kind of a summary of what what the issue is mainly about in any of the B plots, obviously. Um, and if there's anything important, like if there's any character dialogue that's that's super relevant to the story. Um, but from there, they'll usually ask for thumbnails, and it depends on the IP you're working with and also the editor. Um, because I've done work with, uh, it was Sega, Hasbro, Mattel, they're all completely different in terms of like what their process is. Um, but it right. usually will be you turn in thumbnails to the editor, and then the editor will pick one of those thumbnails. And then from there, you actually do the drawing, like a polished version. Um, and they send that to the IP holder to approve. So I would send, like, my finished drawing of, like, the pencil to Sega. Sega would come back with any notes or approve of it. And then from there, once that's approved, you can move on to fully coloring it, inking it, um, whatever the process is for, for each artist, you know, there on out. And then it has to go through a second approval once it's finished. <laughs> so I do have a few of my okay. files that I know, like, my old covers. Able to do that. All right. Yeah. Would you like to ask your next question? Honestly, I ran out of questions here. How about you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I um, I know you work, also worked on ML, MLP. Uh, did you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I've done a lot of work for MLP recently. Um, Riley Farmer, who was working on Sonic, got moved over to, to My Little Pony um, within IDW. And so she was like, hey, done work for me i like the work you do get over here and i was like <laughs> you know I'm, in, I'm into it let's do it um it's really interesting working for something like my little pony because with sonic i grew up on it obviously i i like the character a lot and <laughs> i enjoy my little pony but it's not something i personally grew up with um and so i actually had to like go and consume all of the content after getting hired for idw for them so i had to like watch all of uh <laughs> Friendship is Magic and the, the new Gen 5 My Little Ponies uh, to make sure I knew the characters and everything, obviously, because I, I would hate to go into it not knowing anything about the characters. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. I've done a lot of interiors for them. So I've done a lot more interior work for IDW for the uh, My Little Ponies versus Sonic. Um, I've done a lot more covers for Sonic. Um, so it's been a lot of fun. It's been a, a cool learning process because of doing those interiors. Um, I'm just messing around, seeing what I can away with in my little pony versus versus sonic because obviously it's an ip you know, sega versus hasbro so they they work very different um they each have have an idea of what they want their characters to portray and look like obviously sega wants sonic to be this cool guy this hero type and uh hasbro really wants their ponies to be kind of learning a lesson and stay safe you know so it's kind of like a, a boundaries to <laughs> as as a freelance artist, so that's that's been an interesting learning curve. But I've I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it a lot. That's good. Have some my little ponies in here mixed with my Sonic to, to eat out a little. <laughs> One day, IDW, you got to do a crossover. It's a missed opportunity. <laughs> right. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Behind it. And um, my last question before we go over to the audience is what is one piece of advice you would give for anybody that really wants to work for, for IDW? Since I'm sure there's a bunch of aspiring people here here in the audience. Like, I wanna be I wanna be a cover artist or I wanna work yeah. work on the Sonic IDW comic. Yes. Stick with it. Um it I always tell people that getting a job in the industry, and this is any industry, I grew up um doing a lot of animation, so I'm also kind of loosely involved in the animation industry. Um, half of it is your portfolio, and the other half is being in the right place at the right time, and it's your um, So every chance you have, shoot your shot. If there is an application, go for it. If there's an opening, go for it. Um, you have to be okay with rejection, or at least being told not yet, um, because that happens a lot. Um, when I actually originally applied for IDW, I was told no by Sega originally. Um, so I actually went through the approval process twice before I even got approved to to work on the con. Um, and that's part of it. You know, sometimes it sucks um, being told no or being told not yet. Um, but you got to have some thick skin. You got to know it's not personal. Um, art is a technique that you can work on and you can continue to improve. Maybe it's just not the right time. Um, put in work for your portfolio. Keep it updated. Make sure it's accessible. If like you can make a website or something where you can just kind of drop a link at any time that way if an opportunity arises you can just copy paste your portfolio link um highly recommend that just keep it updated keep it clean uh make sure you're accessible and available that's the gist of it outside of obviously the the technicality and the art stuff uh, that's what i think the the hardest thing to learn is, is sticking with it <laughs> oh great right. word 
another guy say, yeah, so those that have a question, feel free to raise your hand or have a question in the in the discussion. And Christy, do you want to call the first audience member? Yes. How about we bring up the radar? Come on up, radar. Hey, radar. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Hey. Yo, what's up? Hey, I like your icon. Oh, thank you. A friend of mine made it for Christmas. It was a last minute Christmas <laughs> gift. Thank you so much. She'd love to hear that from you. It's so uh, cute. Oh, thank you. Hi. Um, uh, I am currently outside and it is raining, but I could not miss this for the life of me. <laughs> We're all here. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, so uh, apologies for any background noise. I'm trying to uh, mute that as much as possible. But hi, Natalie. Hi. Go. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. Just very excited. I'm kind of bouncing off the walls. So it'd be like oh, that before. right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh my gosh uh first of all just wanted to say congratulations on the partnership with the symphony i saw that yeah. that's pretty cool stuff yeah doing some doing some promotional stuff for the symphony right now i can loosely talk about that that's okay obviously there's certain things i can't mention but i can i can loosely talk about that so <laughs> understandable like, again some things that haven't released yet yeah mm. it's uh, uh, yeah, this for anything i'm not huh. And then a second thing would be my uh, question. And it is about this little thing I tweeted out to you and Evan after the release of issue 64. Not sure if you remember, but I was asking about this one little cat character that appeared in the shopping mall crowd in issue 64. And you responded back to me with a little hee 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 and I was over the moon about it. Um, <laughs> So, uh, can you tell me um, just a little bit about Lightning Star's cameo in issue 64? I wanted to merely ask about it. Like, did did Evan keep it a surprise until the comic come out, or have you always known that this was a thing that she did? So, Lightning Star is kind of my my Sona, my Persona, my Sonic OC. Um, I've got fan art of him up on this wall. There's a few little pictures of him. Um, I've drawn him before in the background, so I did a uh, my B cover for issue, it would have been 47. Um, it would have been the camping arc where they're all running from the fire. Lightning stars in that cover. Um, you know, I'm pretty close to a lot of the other IDW people. We have a, a chat together. We all, you know, share ideas and talk about stuff. Um, that specific cameo in issue 64, Evan had mentioned in one of our chats that he was like, hey, I've got this big scene in the restoration and I need background characters. Um, Because a lot of times when you're doing interiors and you have to come up with background characters, I ran into this issue with My Little Pony, where you kind of realize that, like, um, I've got certain design aspects that I like, so I'll kind of realize when I'm designing background characters that they'll kind of feel the same <laughs> after a certain amount of time where I feel like I'm repeating them. Um, and so sometimes it's nice to get outward, hey, other artists that I'm working with, enemy character designs that I can put in the background. Um, and I just shot off, you know, Lightning Star was there, I shot him off. Um, and Evan decided to include him. So I did know that he was going to be in it. Um, I did get screenshots. I did not know he would have a speaking part. He does say one line. I was like, incredible. Astonishing. But <laughs> so I did, I did know about that. But that's, yeah, that's, that's Lightning Star. He's, he's just my, my little guy. Yeah. I was so happy because that's, that's crazy. He spoke in the comic. Hey. Like you, that's crazy stuff. Um, him yeah, and far. Rick Max character ring in that yeah, same yeah, right. scene. Yep. And I, I'm 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 sorry. I I love looking for all the cameos in the book. I like list them down like every comic there is one. It's just I I love seeing all these little characters intentionally and so unintentionally well. featured in Sonic. It's just it's oh, yeah, awesome. Yeah. There's it's so great. many. A lot of the characters are like either other artists' characters that they've designed. So uh, even Lanolin, you know, now who's like a big name character with a big role, started as Adam Bryce Thomas's character that he just put in the background she was fun to draw so you know you never know but it's it's a lot of fun shout out to abt yeah and shout out to evan stanley yeah <laughs> yes thank you for putting lightning star in there <laughs> <laughs> sorry i really wanted to get that first question out of the way just hey all about your character love him <laughs> love seeing him and uh thank who you. knows maybe, maybe another appearance in the future possibly maybe who knows <laughs> <laughs> You can never be too sure about the future. Well, thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you so much. No problem. Ah. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs>
You too. All righty. Thank you for that question, Radar. Uh, before I touch the next audience member, I'm very curious, Natalie, what would, uh, what drove the decision to make Lanolin from a background character now to the to, to this leading character in charge of the, of the diamond cutters now? Yeah, I was wondering how much so. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not too obviously involved with any of the writing decisions. Um, I know, because obviously Adam does a lot of the interiors, AB does a lot of the interior. Um, and so I know Lanolin was just kind of a reoccurring character that he just put in the background because he enjoyed drawing her. Um, I know she gained a lot of fan interest pretty early on just because she was such a cool looking background character. Um, and so I think that just kind of prompted some of the writers. I don't know if it was Evan or Ian or if Adam pitched it. I'm not sure to be like, can we use this character? You know, we need we need this this uh, role filled. Can we use her? Um, I'm not exactly sure who made that decision or what prompted it, but I'm guessing part of it was just because she's very interesting <laughs> and she already was kind of garnering a lot of uh, fan interest. So that would be my my personal guess. But that would that would be a question for, for Adam, I think. Oh. Hey, the fans are happy. That's, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was cool. it was really cool to see her go from, you know, in that process, go from background character to, to speak. Well, like, she's a good. I, I, I love her design. <laughs> Well, you heard them. Hey, you guys will be seeing Adam at the in-person convention, so you can ask your questions yeah. here. <laughs> Say hi to him for me. I, we will, for sure. All righty. Yeah. Uh, go to next on my left. I will call up Fretchy. Fretchy, how's it going? Hello. <laughs> it's so cool being able to talk, you, talk to you. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> I saw you jump in the audience earlier, and I was like, it's Fretchy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey okay yeah. so my question is it's something funny uh i remember the static popsicle cover like how many times did you pitch that idea until it got approved <laughs> yes so the sonic popsicle cover it was the uh ri the retail uh, initiative cover for sonic endless summer this past summer um i since my very first cover so when you obviously when you're given a cover um, I kind of mentioned this earlier. They give you the synopsis and then they ask you for thumbnails. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they pick an idea. And so when I'm doing thumbnails, it's usually just like simple layout, really small, like, you know, templates that I just doodle something in. Um, depending on the idea, you know, sometimes I'll do four thumbnails. Sometimes I'll turn in like 16 thumbnails because I'm just like, I have so many ideas. Oh my God. But usually I'll make the templates, I'll lay them out and then I'll just kind of fill them and I'll always end up with like these empty spots and I never knew what to do with them because they just looked annoying on like the JPEG that I turned in. I would just fill mm -hmm. them with like nonsense. So I have, <laughs> there's so many cover pitches that I did were just like ridiculous thumbnails or just like, it'd be like Tails gets trolled. Like not, not actually as like idea to pitch. Like obviously they weren't going to choose the, they were more so just to make the editors laugh. Um, because I thought they were funny. But one of them that I included on every single set of, set of thumbnails was it was just a blank white cover with just a melting Popsicle Sonic in the middle um, because I thought it was the funniest thing in the world. And <laughs> Riley actually reached out to me at the time and she was like, hey, so we've got this summer issue coming up and I think you might have a great idea for it. <laughs> she was like, I think now's the time. <laughs> So I was I was ecstatic to be able to be able to do that one. So I obviously added other characters. So it's also got a dual tangle and whisper on it as as popsicles. Not but the original one that I always pitched. It was just a blank one with just Sonic in the middle. <laughs> Wait, are you talking about I, the endless I, summer I, comic? What was that? I'm sorry. Are you talking about the endless summer comic? Yeah, yeah. It was the endless summer the retail initiative cover? Oh. They, they finally allowed me to do that one. I pitched that idea for like every cover I've ever done. <laughs> I, I, it in I love that cover too because it's just so creative. Yeah. yeah thank you. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with it. And I was like, because my style for covers at least tends to be very rendered. Um, I do a very mm -hmm. like realistic painted style, uh, digital and traditional. And so when I was drawing it, I was like, well, obviously this is simple and clean, but how do I make it as like realistic as I can? I was adding like frostbite onto them. I was like, these have to look like they've been in the fridge for like a decade. Like they have to look like they're falling apart. So yeah, no, I'm I'm so glad they allowed me to do that. We actually had to talk to uh, the uh, marketing manager to figure out if we were allowed to use the popsicle because it's technically owned by Blue Bunny, um, the company that makes mm -hmm. the popsicles, um, right. like the design itself. So we actually had to work with them to get it approved before I could even move on to to doing the cover. They were like, "Is this allowed?" 
Because <laughs> oh. it's a piece of merchandise. So, because IDW, oh. Sega owns the right to it, but IDW obviously doesn't. So we had to get approval through Sega and Blue Bunny to their, their we'll possible design. <laughs> so well, it it oh, yeah, yeah. I wasn't too worried about it. They were like, we should just probably check. It's probably fine, but we should at least ask someone. <laughs> Blue Bunny, oh, yeah, if you're watching, that. where. Make make more pops of the other characters now, for real. Make it into a real thing. We needed from for every character. <laughs> yeah, they made a shadow one chain to be going for it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Immediately. Immediately I'm eating. <laughs> well, thank you so much for answering my question. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. No Have problem. a good day. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all righty, uh, Chris, uh, would you like to read Cookie text question or call up another audience member? Uh, let me read the text question. Luckily, I got the discussion chat on here. Let's see, Cookie, 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 Cookie. Need to find that question. Okay, there we go. Found it. All right. So they asked to, uh, uh, first of all, no, wait, okay. They said, first of all, hope you're doing amazing. I'm a, bit, a huge fan of your work. As for my question, what would be the best advice you can give? And to a digital artist that would like to go back to traditional art after so long, mostly painting via hand. Oh, that's a very yeah, good no, question. That's a good question. I, so I grew up when I was learning art and doing art, fully traditional, um, all painting. I did a lot with Copic markers and ink. Um, and then once I got to college, um, I did go to art school and I went into animation and comics and illustration and stuff. Obviously, a lot of today's industries are digital. And so when I went to school for it, we were taught traditional you know, methods, but most of the stuff is digital. So I had done so much digital that I basically almost stopped doing it. Um, and then after college, after I graduated, it was kind of burnt out a little bit. I was like, I really want to get back into traditional stuff. Um, so I get that because <laughs> I was like, where do I even start? Um, it's a tough question to answer because I think it also entirely depends on what kind of traditional art you do. Um, if it's something that you're trying to get back into and you feel stuck in it, what I've always found that helps, um, and this also just helps with burnout in general for me, um, is just switching to a completely different medium. So like if you're used to doing traditional art with like pencils or markers, try painting, try getting messy. Um, if you're used to doing painting, you know, maybe try picking up some pastels or some colored pencils or something. Um, try something unique, try something fun. Um, and just kind of mess with it. Um, that would be my my best best guess would be just get messy and have fun. Um, I do a lot recently too, where I've combined digital and traditional. So I highly recommend that if that's something that you're struggling with. Like if you've noticed that doing digital is really comfortable and you're not as comfortable now doing traditional. Um, like something I actually did for that shadow painting when I was doing that cover. Um, I actually digitally did all of the pencils. Like I drew it all digitally on Photoshop. Um, and then I bought a mini projector, like it's a mini phone projector. It was like 20 bucks on Amazon. And I projected the pencils onto the canvas um, so that I could just have that as a clean image. And then I'm there, um, you know, so there's a lot you can do with combining the two of them too. If that's something that you want to do to kind of like make a transition between them easier. Um, but I definitely recommend just getting messy and having fun with it. <laughs> it's, it's really personal. I think I don't, I don't know like an exact answer to that, but that's, that's usually what I do. <laughs> Uh, All right. Great, great answer there. Yeah, and thank you for that question, uh, Cookie Star. Yeah, that was a good one, one too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Make sure you guys take notes. I'm I'm trying to get into a lot more traditional stuff lately. I've also working on. I've got some random sketches that I'm doing over here. So. Yeah. Oh, right. that one. Yeah, I will call up the next audience member that's on my left and call up the prankster. Oh, prankster. Here we go. Uh -oh. Prankster. Uh oh. It might be a okay at the moment. I'm oh, so no sorry. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> I thought I thought you stepped away. <laughs> oh, oh, you're good. Oh, you're good. Holy shiitake nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First off, I am so sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. okay. Totally fine. Literally, you're all. Good. It is a pleasure to be meeting you, Miss Natalie, or Nat, yeah, I guess. Okay. Nat. Either one is uh, I don't mind. <laughs> yes. Um, first of all, I love your work. Just wanted to say that real quick. Um, yeah, I appreciate my it. question is, which out of all Sonic characters since you've been drawing for IDW, 
Which one's your favorite? I, my favorite Sonic character in total is Supersonic. <laughs> big, big fan, big fan of Supersonic. <laughs> I haven't drawn him officially yet. Maybe one day. Maybe, maybe one day. Knock on wood. <laughs> um, I, I, I have terrible main character syndrome where I just always like the main character of whatever media I'm consuming. So obviously I'm a big Sonic fan. Sonic's my favorite. Hey, um, listen, there's nothing wrong with liking the main <laughs> character wrong with that nothing wrong with yeah that. exactly yeah, yeah, i definitely in terms of like idw specifically i really like tangle and oh, i've worked fine. on a, a good piece of work with whisper like i've i've i love whisper and drawing her has made me like her a lot more because i realize like the intricate design and like the way she portrays emotion and everything um so i i really have a, a big big appreciation for for tangle and whisper i, I love them <laughs> they're so yeah. fun especially in drawing for them Oh, they they, they've so, grown me a lot. A lot. <laughs> you've made IDW comics so fun for me to read. So I want to thank you. Um, thank you. Even though my favorite yeah, yeah. is Silver, and Silver to me, Silver is best boy. I, oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you for answering my question. I shall take my leave. Good night, everybody. Bye. <laughs> and as a supersonic fan myself, I, I approve, Natalie. Um, and he's sitting back there. He's not lit up right now. Um, <laughs> I, I'm curious, before we call up the next audience member, if you had to do a crossover story between Sonic and MLP, how how would it go down? Like, it, it, it's a crossover uh, fans have been wanting for years. Uh, and see, it's been... weird, though, because, uh, no, because the current My Little Pony comics are the Gen 5 My Little Pony. They're not the Friendship is Magic Gen 4 ones. Um, and so a lot of the crossover material that we've seen with like Sonic and Milo Pun, the fan made stuff, um, you'll see like Rainbow Dash and Sonic like that wouldn't necessarily happen nowadays. They do sometimes do Gen 4 stuff. IDW still does make Gen 4 Friendship is Magic stuff. So like maybe I think that would be the ideal version. If they did do some sort of official crossover, I would hope that they can use the Friendship is Magic My Little Pony characters. Um, I do very much enjoy the Gen 5 characters, um, but they're not as fleshed out or obviously not as involved in the community as the, as the current ones, but we've, that, would be, that would be very interesting. I would be interested to see how, how the story went, <laughs> because usually when you, when you see MLP and Sonic stuff, it's always like Sonic versus Rainbow Dash and like Rouge and Rarity or something. Like It feels very like two types of personality. So, yeah, I don't know. I'd be interested to see what they did if they did that <laughs> or if like hasbro and sega would even be open to the idea i'm not sure one day darn it one day IDW. Yeah, maybe, maybe one day. I'll, be first in line. I'll be first in line i demand a spot on that <laughs> 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 right, i've I'll... earned that spot <laughs> uh, uh Kurt, would you like to call the next person yes let's bring uh mm... oh there's somebody who would probably be really wanting to ask some questions. Let's bring up Gokin. Hey, Gokin, I can, I can see you jumping down. It's like, yeah, let, let's, let's have that Sonic and MLP crossover. <laughs> oh, love the My Little Pony icon. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, hold on. Let me just put push to talk. You know I had to, Gokin. You know I had to. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. And you can tell by my OC as well. And yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> also, also um, hello, Natalie Haynes. I actually hello. just... I actually just caught you just caught my attention since you also mentioned MLP as well. <laughs> so yeah, like first of all, I love your artworks; it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, the I, the only the question I just like to ask is that are you open for commissions? So currently, right now, my schedule is full. Um, I'm working on finishing the Kimbucky Roller Derby My Little Pony arc um, for IDW, and so my schedule's pretty pretty packed for the next month or two. Um, I actually have recently, um, so while I was doing freelance stuff with IDW, I also worked a day job, obviously, just to like make sure I could still pay bills. Um, just a local place here here in Columbus. Um, but I actually recently quit that job, so I can go full freelance full time. Um, that being said, if I ever don't have comic work, uh, keep an eye on my social medias and stuff. Cause I, I definitely can see myself in the near future opening commissions to like, you know, take on extra income each month. Um, so that's something that is definitely more plausible now than it has been in the last few years, just because of my day job. Um, so currently no, <laughs> unfortunately, 
Um, but in the near future, definitely yes. <laughs> so I will definitely make like frequent posts about that on my social media as a fiber am. So on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I'm on blue sky, but I need to be more active on there. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I'll definitely make, make posts about it if, if I ever open forum. So, yeah. That's all good. Because the reason why I'm asking is because I do want, I, I do want to keep in touch with your social media and so on. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't use Twitter anymore. I just deleted it recently, but I'm like, I have blue sky and also have Instagram because the re I yeah. want to hopefully like, have you contribute to my own Sonic LMP project in the future as well. That's why I'm commissioning you just for promotional purposes. So, you know, yeah. you're really known for the IDW. I thought, you know, you could just, I could commission you so that, you know, just so that I can spread the word, word around the community, you know, cause it's my passion project. Yeah. So that's <laughs> what I'm Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I would be down. That'd be so fun. Yeah. Definitely keep an eye on that. I've got Instagram. Um, got the blue sky twitter i have a tumblr but i don't use it super often <laughs> um i also just have my website which is like linked in any of my um social media bios my website should be linked and i would i would also update that if i ever said like commission open um so that's that's really the best place to kind of watch for that is any of this so, yeah all right sure. um, i don't want to wait to waste too much of the time but you know just hope you have a rest of your panel and your rest of your sunday thank you you too <laughs> uh, Hey, a lot of people in the chat are like, Natalie, please take my money. I want to commission you. <laughs> I will take your money. I'll take your I, entire I, I stock. That's what they're saying right now. I need, to, I need to be able to guarantee art before I, I take your money. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much more free time. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if there's any other text questions. If not, yeah, you guys can choose the next person to come up. Yeah, sure. Um, unfortunately, the name cut off, but the wonder something. But uh, I think the wonderful, well, the wonderful oh, chow master. Okay. The wonderful chow master. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi, what a name. Hello. Hello. Also a great icon. Hello. Some Hello. Icon. Hello. Can you, can you yeah. hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. What, what's your question for Natalie? Hi. Hello, Natalie. It is incredible to talk to you. I love your Thank work. You. My, I, I really love the Renaissance. Uh, shadow it's uh it's absolutely yeah it's <laughs> i rarely see art like that so you know to see that fully for idw is probably the best thing that i've ever witnessed before my very eyes um, <laughs> i appreciate it i was like now is my time it's now or never <laughs> <laughs> um do you have any plans to do any more renaissance art for sonic I would love to. <laughs> Again, I actually, when I bought the original canvas, I bought two of them. So there's one sitting back here. Um, uh, that's the same size and stuff of it. Uh, it's like a perfect aspect ratio of a comic cover. Um, so I, I would love to in the future, whether that be Sonic, My Little Pony, anything else I work on, uh, both of them. Again, it is a lot of like planning that goes into it. So it's it's something I would have to like mentally prepare myself for, but I am I am one thousand percent ready for that commitment <laughs> if the opportunity comes up. Um I like to save something like that for a cover that I feel like it conveys the story well because sometimes um with like issues in arcs, you'll see like a like an example, I guess, the, the camping arc from a while ago um, with IDW Sonic. Like, I don't know if the script I was given, I don't know if I can visualize like a Renaissance cover with the prompt I was given for something like that one. Um, but like with the story I was given for the, the Shadow one, issue 59, I was like, oh, this is perfect. It has the, it's going to fit the vibe. So I guess that's the main thing is waiting for another opportunity to come up where the script kind of allows for that vibe because <laughs> it might be a little thrown off if you know it's like got this whole like gothic renaissance cover and the issue is like they're baking cookies or something like <laughs> it might be a little weird <laughs> so i'm definitely waiting for like the theming to be appropriate for it just because i i like to try to convey the theme in the cover um as well as i can but i i, I would love to make more more painted covers even if they're not as big and extract i would love to do a lot more like traditional that style I, yeah, I have last. hey that's perfectly understandable i um i came across your instagram post when you were uh when you were like working on the process for it and i was like yeah. oh my god that's that's really it's incredible it's all yeah. traditional it blew I my know, mind i had like too. all these video files waiting in my phone i was like waiting for them to post the cover i was like just do it just do it 
<laughs> the urge to press the button. Please post it. Come on. Um, you were sharing all the, I, the 59 covers except that one. And I was like, just do it. <laughs> I really, um, I went on your shop one time and I saw it was for, for sale as a print. And I was like, I need to get it. And I did not get okay. it, unfortunately. But one day, you know. Okay. One day. All that in the... <laughs> And the supersonic one, which I love because it, it has really good detail. But yeah, yeah I appreciate I just, it. Yeah, I've got, I've got a few different sonic prints up on my on my print shop. So and hopefully I'm hoping <laughs> to do a overhaul now that I've got more free time. I'm doing an overhaul of my my shop and add some more prints and stuff soon. So and some more original. Um those are like yeah. loosely what I'm working on, so hopefully I can get some of these up there when they're done. But yeah. <laughs> Awesome. I'm 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 just great talking to you. I'm, I'm glad thank I got to, uh, glad I got to share my question. Yeah, thank you so hey, much. Have a good weekend. <laughs> All righty. So thank you for that question. Uh Chris, would you like to read uh Lily's text question? Yep, right about to right now. So from Lily to ask, what advice do you have for an inspiring comic artist? Time saving tips would be nice and that's something I'm struggling with on. Yes, I definitely recommend obviously read comics that that feels like a weird tip <laughs> but a lot of people I usually see this with people that want to do cover art um where they're like yeah i want to do cover art for the comics but they don't do comics themselves um you definitely need the comic experience to get involved in comics obviously comic and um if you find that you're reading sonic comics cool awesome also find some other comics to read so that you can get that inspiration from not just one source um, study comic artists that you like so if you're looking at one artist like uh, ABT like Adam um, if you're looking at his work and you're like oh I really love the pacing in this you know try to figure out why you enjoy that pacing is it the panel layout do you like the writing better than the art um, do you like the art better than the writing you know kind of figuring out for you personally what works and what doesn't work um, for your own style um, in terms of like actually making the comics I highly recommend studying storyboarding if you haven't yet, I know I loosely mentioned it, but I actually have an animation background uh, before I got into comics. So I had studied storyboards before doing comics, and they're basically the same thing um, in terms of like how you frame it and how you tell a story in like a narrative like sense. Um, it's kind mm -hmm. of like the passage of time with character and a story. Um, so studying storyboards, studying sequentials. Um, with art, obviously, um, you're going to have a lot of instances where you're drawing the same characters over and over and over, and that's an art and, or, um, sorry, in comics and animation. Um, so learning that consistency, just practice it and keep it up. Um, experiment with panel layouts, because that's something that's unique to comics um, that other industries don't get. Um, the way you arrange panels can really help tell a story or really change the way that, like, an audience feels about a story. Um, I definitely recommend studying sequentials and storyboards kind of like just narrative study practices um if you're looking for like comics specifically. <laughs> but that that would be my my best advice Stop. i know there's like a lot of just free online like youtube tutorials or some people will do like paid classes online um from some really experienced artists i definitely recommend checking some of those out um even just the free stuff um Instead of like you don't you don't have to pay all this money to go to art school or anything you don't need to get it all for free online, <laughs> um, but definitely just just doing some research and studying and taking certain artists that you like and trying to figure out why like their comics um, that that can go a long way just kind of the so I found that 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 helps me fast so if I'm looking especially starting starting a new media like if you're new to comics that's what I've found the best way to do it. All right, you're done. Thank you for that question, Lily. And I'll read uh, Clary's text question. Um, have you ever had any kind of artistic block while working on IDW-related projects? If so, what do you do to get out of that? That's a good question. That's a good question. That is very common. So going into any art industry, obviously, if you make art your job, um, it can be a little more demeaning. Um, obviously, like even with Sonic, I love Sonic, but sometimes if it's like a requirement and there's a deadline, <laughs> it's a lot harder to do. Um, even just the mental aspect of it. Um, so burnout, very common, very frequent, especially with comics, because comics are usually 20 pages each. Um, and say there's roughly seven, six, seven panels on each page. You know, you're drawing these characters hundreds of times for one issue, basically. Um, or however many characters. Um, so it's very easy to get burnt out. 
I, my biggest recommendation is to make sure you are still setting time for your personal art. And if that personal art is still fan art, just not related to what is assigned to you or something, if that personal art is your OCs, if it's abstract, if it's something, you know, original, um, just make sure you're setting apart time to do that as well so that not all of your art is 100% work-based. Um, some people will do it. I'll kind of switch between, like, if I'm doing a warm-up before I start working for the day, I'll do, like, a 10, 15-minute warm-up where I'll draw one of my characters or I'll draw another Sonic character that I, I just want. Um, or after work, kind of like as a reward, you know, to trick my mind, I'll, I'll draw something for myself after I'm done. If you are able to set hours for your work, so like with the IDW stuff, I'll be like, okay, I'm going to work on it for this many hours today, and then stop. after that, I can't work on it. Um, obviously, if that changes with deadlines, but in terms of like, if you have the time and the ability to set deadlines for yourself so that you don't overwork yourself, that is a good way to do it. Um, and then kind of rounding back to something from earlier, I've noticed that if I'm really burnt out, something that will help me is at least switching the median. So like if I'm stopping work from IDW for a second to be like, OK, I'm just going to get out some acrylic paint and just make something really messy real quick um, and just have fun, like just make art that is fun. That's not related to something you're getting paid for <laughs> um, is what I think is the best. Um, and also making sure that you're consuming media I guess that isn't inherently related to the topic if that's something you're burnt out from so with Sonic obviously it's a lot of Sonic all the time and so sometimes if I noticed I'm starting to feel uninspired or I'm getting that mental burnout um, I'll stop and I'll go play a video game or something completely different that's not Sonic or I'll, I'll watch a movie or I'll try to get involved in a franchise that's not inherently related that way it's just it's a different outlet that can help spark some inspiration um, that maybe you didn't see before because it's not something, you know, some media anymore. So I've, I've been doing a lot of video games uh, lately. I did all of, um, I played Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, <laughs> and that, that kind of helped inspire me a little bit more. So just making sure you're not feeling stuck and making sure you like mentally and physically have outlets that aren't just that paid work. Hmm. All righty. So thank you for that question, Kari. Uh, Chris, would you like to call the next audience member? All right. I will. Let's see. How about we bring up a comic book? Uh, I can't read the rest of your names. I just spread out, but let's bring up a comic book. Hey, Natalie. How's it going? Hello. Hello. Good. Great. Great. Um, Yo, know, thank you so much for inviting me up. Um, So my question for you is, um, for future, like, if you were in charge of like making a story, um, what character would you want to feature in that story that usually hasn't been predominant in a lot of uh, Sonic stories? That's a good question. I don't know. I, I definitely, I have a list saved of like pitches I would like to do because I do write. Um, I haven't done writing in a long time. I would love to write sometime in the future if the opportunity ever pops up. Obviously. Um, I do have, like, a list of pitches that I would love to give. Obviously, for, like, NDA's sake, I can't say what those are. And also, if I do right. say something, that means I can't do it anymore because now it's out in the open. Um, but um, I don't know. There's definitely a lot of, like, niche game characters. Um, obviously, I know we've got some stuff coming up with, like, the Babylon Rogues um, that's been shown. Um, so just different things like that, like some of the niche video game characters maybe that you don't get to see as much, um, pitching some of those and, and seeing them. But, I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Exactly, in terms of like niche ones we haven't seen because we've actually been getting a pretty good amount of representation, I think. Um, yeah. I know obviously there's a lot of focus on the IDW original characters, which like is going to happen, obviously. Same thing happened with Archie. You get a focus on the Archie original characters. That's just how comics work. Um, right. But I, I think focusing on some of those niche characters would, would be really fun because Sonic's obviously got a lot of characters. <laughs> 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 Doing something with Eggman would be fun. Right. Like Eggman's. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much. And I, I will actually be heading over to the uh, Cleveland show as well. So hopefully I'll be running into you soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If anybody's going to be at the Cleveland Sonic Symphony, I'll be there. I'm making stickers for it. I'll have lots of stickers to pass out. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Have a good weekend. You too. Take care. All right. <laughs> Also, I want to I want to say I, I can't remember off the top of my head who designed uh, Serge's new, new outfit, but it's very well done. I, I think it was a combination of a few different artists that did a 
all the the original writers uniforms yeah i'm not i'm not entirely sure who specifically did what but i know i know a bunch of them worked on them yeah, they're they're so cool <laughs> i'm really i'm really excited for the writers arc all <laughs> um i will bring up cj destroyer next um, on that? hey cj how's it going hello hello, nice hello. You again yeah yeah how you, how you been not too bad i'm doing all right right now Nice, nice. I am uh, still recovering from a cold, but I'm I'm getting there. Oh, they've been going around. I've avoided them thus far. I'm surprised that I, I haven't stuck on one again. That's cool. Uh, Usually get sick. I yeah, uh, I guess I do have a question related to like um, art in general. Uh, yeah. How do you keep? Uh, what motivates you while doing your? uh cover art process and how do you manage that motivation throughout um some of it is just very much excitement <laughs> obviously i very much enjoy working for sonic i enjoy working on my little pony. um knowing that other people are going to see it and share it around is exciting and just like knowing you're going to be able to see it in print someday um is really cool so that kind of can motivate you to be like oh, i have to get this done i have to make it good because people are going to look at it and probably judge it a lot Right. Um, but in a positive way. Um, I use yeah. that as a motivation. <laughs> yeah, um, that's that's cool. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, it, I think it depends from artist to artist. Um, I very much enjoy drawing Sonic, so I don't usually have too much of a hard time like staying motivated to get them done. If anything, it's mainly just staying away from that burnout territory. Um, and that's yeah. why I kind of do in some of that stuff that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, that's. Really yeah, the same. I, I usually will like listen to stuff, like uh, I'll listen to documentaries while I'm working, or like I'll play music. I've been like playing this the Fallout Boy soundtracks on repeat uh, nice. <laughs> while doing this My Little Pony arc. That's good. <laughs> um, just something to like stimulate you, I guess, while you're while you're working, um, to make sure you're not just like going through the mood, you know. So yeah, I usually I have mean, something on that I can listen to or think about while I'm working, but I don't I don't zone out, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 the same thing with me. I uh, I keep doing my uh, art stuff by uh, being yeah. motivated, and just drawing drawing like a uh, fan art for other people. That's yeah. kind of like my stick nowadays. Yeah, well, it's nice. It's nice with the uh, the with IDW specifically, like with the Sonic and the My Little Pony. Um, obviously, the general audience they're all ages, but they are aimed at like children. Um, and so, like with the Sonic stuff, I've actually set up at events before. Um, to like sell art or just to represent IDW and I've had like little children come up to the booth and just like talk about their favorite Sonic character as if uh, nobody's ever heard about them before so I've like nice. I've had kids run up and tell me everything they know about Knuckles the Echidna and they're just so excited <laughs> to see somebody else talk about Knuckles the Echidna like right. so it's it's very motivating just just kind of it's very rewarding I guess the aspect of it but I, I think all art is very rewarding personally it does uh, well, uh, I'm not gonna hold you so long. I'm gonna get back to uh, yeah. doodling. Yeah, thank you for the thank question. You, <laughs> you too. Papa. <laughs> All right, yeah, thank you for that question, CJ, and shout out to the next generation of fans. Oh, Peace. they're so excited. They're so excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Chris, would you like to read the text question I just penned? Yep, hang on. I'm going to the chat. I got him on my phone. Um, oh, wait, it's the one from Kari? Uh, the, the one from 2X Mile. Yeah. And that's the reason I'm not singing on my end. But, yeah, you mind, uh, like, uh, pinning me? Uh, yeah, I, I, I can read it. I. Uh, he said, um, said, Natalie, you're, you're, you've been such an inspiration to me, but I've got a question. Besides your own, what comic covers are your favorite? This, this could be for any comic comic, by the way. Ooh. Oh, hold on. I got to look up the, like, issue numbers. I figure it is now. I see it. Yeah, because I'm like, I know them in my brain, visually. <laughs> like, look up what they were. Um, I'm I'm a huge fan inherently of connecting covers. So like obviously you've got Tyson's like original connecting. Um, Evan did a connecting cover with one of the mainline issues, and then um, one of the bad guy issues. Really cool. Um, Natalie Fordrain does a lot of super cool covers. I love her stuff. Um, I think one of my favorite ones. It's the Sonic. It's for uh, 
the metal virus arc. I can't, I can't find the issue number off the top of my head. Um, Evan Stanley drew it, and it's Sonic in front of the chalkboard, and he's like really stressed. <laughs> That's a good comic cover. I really like that one. I think it's just the detail because I'm inherently drawn to detail. Um, there's a lot of fun little cameos on the chalkboard. I think it's fun. You can tell that that she had fun with it. Um, a lot of the like <laughs> dramatic covers that came out of the Metal Virus arc, I really like. I really like the juxtaposition of having like super dramatic art with like it's literally Sonic the Hedgehog. Like it shouldn't be that dramatic, but I I, I like that juxtaposition. Um, so I I have a lot of fun with those ones. But yeah. <laughs> how about from MLP? It could be Gen Four, or Gen Five. Do you have any yeah. favorite comic covers fr- from that? They had some really cool ones with uh, Big Hoof. They had a spinoff miniseries called uh, Camp Big Hoof, and it was about Bigfoot. Big Hoof. Uh, they had some really cool ones. The RI covers for those artists. I forget. I don't. I don't want to like butcher their name. <laughs> I can't find their name right now. They're the My Little Pony artists that did the RI covers for Camp Big Hoof. Those ones are all very cool. I love those covers. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chris, would you like to call up the next person? Yep. Let's see. How about we bring up and gab some? All right. Yeah. I'm on up, Gabs. Hey, Gabs. Hello. Hey. Yeah. Hello. What is up? <laughs> Hi, Natalie. You are an amazing artist. I really love the skill you show in the Thank comics. You. Your, Thank you. your I love shadow. Your art. Oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, you, you are a master. I'm, I'm really, uh, you, you are amazing. Uh, there's so many stuff that not so many people can do, like that shadow cover. I was really surprised you. when you it. did all it's that so traditionally. So you were talking <laughs> about you doing all this, like, oh, re- I really wish to do this specific stuff with the covers uh, about shadow and the popsicles. So my question is, uh, since those are stuff that you really wish to do, uh, is, there, is there other styles you want to experiment in the future for the covers? One, I really want to do more traditional covers. Um, so the only traditional one I've done so far has been that shadow one, and that was acrylic paint. Um, I do Copic markers a lot, like I do ink markers a lot, so I would love to do like an ink illustration. Um, and then one art medium that I would really love to get into, uh, back when I was in high school, um, I used to do uh, a lot of art competition, like national art competition, so that I could get scholarships to pay for school. Um, and so I messed with a lot of medians for that to kind of see what stood out in a competition sense. And one medium that I really loved was cut paper art. So it's where oh like gosh. you take layers, yeah, like layers of paper and kind of cut them and manipulate the paper to create like a three illustration. Um, yes, I yes, would yes, absolutely yes. love to do something like that. Um, oh. The main thing with a lot of the traditional stuff, especially the experimental stuff, like the the cut paper stuff, I would have to make a few examples of like my current art in that because I haven't done that in so long. Um, I would have to make some examples and kind of show the editors and show Sega to make sure they're okay with that because they don't want an artist just like randomly trying to do something for the first time and then it kind of doesn't work out and you're on a deadline and now what do you do? You know so. I have to mess around with experimenting some of that to make sure I'm confident in that before I pitch it again. Um, but I would love to do some of those traditional stuff, especially the cut paper. Or if I could do something like three, I used to do a lot of sculpture. So if there's any way to do some sort of like sculpture, like three, and then like use the photo as the cover or something, I would love to do that. That's, I've, I've definitely got a few ideas in, in terms of that. But again, that's also one of those things that I feel like I would have to wait for like a story that I feel like fits that vibe to come up before I'm like, what I'm doing. Here's my idea. Uh, yeah, oh, I'd, I'd be really excited. That's really uh, amazing. I was trying to experiment with something like that because it's. I saw so many artists experimenting, and it's such amazing style. It's a I, beautiful I really wish, medium. I really wish to see in the future you trying this new style because it, I know it's going to be amazing. I trust you. <laughs> I, I can't wait to try it. Some someday, someday soon. Again, hopefully now that I've got more free time. Hopefully sooner is sooner than I thought, but. <laughs> oh, great. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for answer. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye. Bye bye. All righty. So thank you for that question, Gav. Uh, I will call up Ed Gamer next. Uh, they haven't been called up yet. Yo. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Hey. Also. Oh, it is nice to meet you, Natalie. I s- 
seen that one shadow cover, which my brother sent me, by the way. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> but m since we already know one person asked about the IDW characters, I want to say something about the Archie characters. What is your favorite Archie Sonic character that was ever made? In I, I'm a big fan of Scourge. <laughs> <laughs> I really like Scourge. I thought he was funny because he was like kind of pathetic. I'm not gonna lie, but, but like he was in a funny and endearing way. I I really like Scourge. Obviously, I special special place in my heart for the Freedom Fighters. Um, yeah. But I, I thought Scourge's Scourge's arc was really really cool. And, um, especially once he transitioned from that like anti Sonic to Scourge aspect. Yeah. Um, the whole yeah, like, he was just like a, a Sonic just. Like yeah, when, yeah, but yeah, once he kind of became his own character, it was really cool. I I used to like obsessively read them. I used to go down to my my public library and rent out all of the issues. I couldn't buy them all at the time. I would just rent out all of the like Scourge <laughs> issues or the like Sonic Universe like Scourge ones, and I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is the highlight of my nine year old life. I was so excited. <laughs> I love him. He's fun. And uh, I have a second question. Uh, well, you can save that for the next yeah, round. Yeah, All right, yeah. Then. so feel free to raise your hand again, and we'll come All back right to then. you. All right, then. All righty. Uh, so thank you for that question. Uh, Chris, would yeah. you like to call the next person? Before you do that, speaking of Scourge, how would you feel if Scourge was brought into the IDW comics? Yeah, I'm curious about that as well. I, I think it would be interesting. I, I like the idea of, like, an anti-Sonic. I think that's always fun, and part of that's just because I, I think, again, the edgy stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, and I, I always have to place, but you know, NGT right. best kind of story. Um, yeah, I, I think it would be interesting if they if they brought a character like Scourge or Scourge himself. Um, obviously, I don't think that would ever happen. But if it did, I think it would be very Bloody cool. I would be really want. interested to see what like Evan does with it because I, I really like Evan's style of writing um, in terms of mm -hmm. how she tells stories. And stories so I would All I would right. be really interested to see or, or like Danny. Pitch something like that, Daniel Barnes. I think he would yeah. handle it really well. Honestly, a lot of people want to see both not only Scourge but Sally in the IDW comics. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love the Freedom Fighters. Miss them. Mm -hmm. Go on, pour one out for me. Freedom Fighters forever. But anyways, <laughs> how about we bring up? Um, let's bring up uh, Rosebud. Uh, thank you. Hey, there, bud. Hello. Oh, wow. Hello. Hey. Hello. It's very nice to meet you, Natalie. My question for you is, if you read the Sonic IDW comics, what is your favorite story arc so far? I I really liked Overpowered. Um, I can't remember what like issue numbers. Uh, 54 was in there because I did some interior work for 54. Um, that like arc, um, it was after Surge was kind of defeated in issue 50. Um, and then she took the uh, dynamo cage from Dr. Eggman to kind of overpower herself. Um, I right. thought that was really cool and really fun. I liked it because it was a lot of really cool action. Um, the writing and the art was really dynamic, but then it also had a lot of really good like emotional beats. Um, so it had some really cool, like slow, just emotional parts um, that I think really, really helped to the writing. Evan's really good at like slice of life emotion type writing. And so I think that really highlighted it for her. Um, I got to work on some stuff in that issue, so I'm, I'm a little biased for, for that arc. Um, but I had a lot of fun with it, and I got to work with that emotion. Um, and kind of, how do you take a character that's, like, so cartoon and, like, dynamic and make, like, a subtle emotion with them? Um, so I think, I think that idea with the art and the writing well, worked really well in that arc. So I, I would say overpowered. <laughs> but I know there's some stuff coming up that's, like, gonna be good. But... <laughs> current arcs i would i would say overpowered Thank you for answering my question yeah no problem thank you <laughs> all right yeah uh, thank you for that question but uh, before we get the next i remember i'm curious what would what would the decision be behind bringing the sonic rider stuff back because that, that, was, that, that was certainly a big surprise since we haven't seen it since the uh, last game yeah. yeah so obviously a lot of the idw people that work actually i think all pretty much all of all of the writers and artists that work in idw are like sonic fans like they grew up with sonic or they got involved with sonic um they very much care for this character of his story and everything um and so a lot of us grew up on those old games and played them a lot and you know i've seen a lot of the fans talk about it too where it's like you have this really cool concept like sonic writers and then sega doesn't really talk about it a lot anymore um because it is a special um, so I think part of it 
nostalgia driven. Um, again, I don't know like the logistics in terms of like how it was actually pitched or approved. I don't know all of that. Um, but it is something that I know a lot of the artists and writers have talked about in our like private chats before where we're just like, that would be really cool to do the writer's arc. <laughs> so I don't know how like officially it got pitched and approved, but, but I know it's something that we've been talking about for a while. Um, just because it's fun and unique, you know, there's a, there's a lot of really cool Sonic stuff that came out in like the early to late 2000s. Um, that Sega doesn't really talk about a lot anymore um, for their own reasons, which is fair, but uh, you know, it'd be fun totally to explore some of that. Back. Yeah. I will say it was no, just I mean, nice to see that return after so many years. So, but yeah, I'm so excited them for bringing them back. Yeah, I'm super excited for it. I'm super excited for more stuff to come out about it. It's looking, it's looking really cool so far. So, I can say that. It's looking real good. <laughs> All righty. Uh, Chris, would you like to call, call up someone that hadn't been caught up yet? Hmm. Got a lot of them. Uh, I'll call up with the one that has what looks like a Fleetway profile picture. I can't really pronounce the name because it's just symbols. Yeah, well, oh, it wait, never mind. Exactly. Hello, welcome. There you go. Hello. Hey, thank you. Okay, I got a question for Natalie. Yes. All right. Speaking of uh, Fleetway Sonic, how would you feel <laughs> if Fleetway Sonic was to come to the IDWs? <laughs> I think that would also be cool. Again, I really like the idea of like an anti evil Sonic. Um, I I love Fleetway. I think he's so cool. Fleetway Supersonic is so cool. Um, I think it would also be cool to see, like, if if that was a possibility in the future. Um, because obviously, the Fleetway comics themselves, based in the UK, have their own like characterizations and way of telling story. Obviously, um, I think it would be really interesting to see how they bring that aspect instead of just like visually the character. Um, to see how they inter- interpret or like bring in any parts of the actual story or the storytelling um, into that aspect. I think that would be really cool. There's definitely some like huge Fleetway fans on the IDW team. I know Rick specifically, one of the anchors, um, huge, huge Fleetway fan. <laughs> so maybe, maybe hopefully one day uh, that yeah. would be fun to do some sort of callback for that. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks that. for answering my question though. Yeah. Hey, no problem. <laughs> Good well, day. I'm a skedaddle. I got work to do. That's fair. <laughs> me too. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So thank you for that question. I will call up, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Ryan uh, Tendrick next. Come on up, Ryan. Oh, hey. hey, Ryan. Uh, hello. Howdy. It's nice to meet you, Natalie. Hey, you too. You know, I'm really shy about this. Uh, you're, you're uh, good. You know, guys, I am okay. All good. All good. Uh, I do have a <laughs> question. Yeah, go for it. Uh, since you love Surge, which other Sonic female characters do you like besides Surge? I love Surge. I really like a lot of <laughs> Love Surge. Love Surge. Um, I really like a lot of the IDW original ones. Uh, Tangle and Whisper are really cool. Um, I love Blaze. <laughs> I, I'm hoping we can get more Blaze in the comic because I, I love her. I think her story is really cool. Um, you know, I would love to see like her Ooh. world explored a little bit more. Because um, we really don't get well, to see a lot cool. of that, or that kind of slice of life stuff. But I, I it love. It would be nice if we actually got her own, if she got her own arc in the IDW. We can love dream. That. That was so fun. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Come on, guys, give her some more love. Yeah. Her, have her own story. <laughs> well, one day I would love to see. One day I would love to see IDW just do like this whole development arc on her. Oh, that would be great. Mm-hmm. I would love it. Like her whole world. There's like so much we haven't seen. Like there's so much potential with that. I would love to see that. that exactly. So cool. Yeah, even bring back some character that hasn't been seen in a long time. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I won't yeah. really say his name because it'd be kind of hard to actually pronounce okay. uh, in the last part of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of Sonic characters that I could think of returning. Even certain That's ones like it. Sticks the Badger, which I do love her. Yeah, I love Sticks. Sticks is really cool. I love, I love Sonic Boo. <laughs> Controversial opinion. Too. I love Sonic Boo. <laughs> <laughs> My childhood. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, Drain, did right. that, that answer your question? Yep. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, All right. right. Yeah, thank you for that. Qu- <clears throat> Give me that question there, Ryan. Uh, Chris, would you like to call the next person? Yes. Since we are on round two. Oh, wait, Telsco hasn't been brought up yet on yeah, the first round, so let's yeah. bring her up. Yeah, so Telsco and Trigger, they haven't come up yet. Yep. Hello. Time on Hello. Up. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I, I love your art so much. Do you do custom like stickers, like Mind of the Pony and Sonic? 
thank you. So, what's your question? My my question is: Do you do, do you do stickers like you know you do your art like you know Sonic and Monopoly Pony? Yeah, I I have an online shop um, linked in my bio of any of my social medias. It'll just say like online shop or something, um, or print shop. Um, I have some stickers. I have lots of stickers. I, I love making stickers. <laughs> They're just really easy. I love cutting them out. It's therapeutic. Um, I also set up at conventions sometimes, and I'll always post about that um, if I'm ever like in person at an event. Um, but yeah, I, I do a lot of stickers. I, I love them. I love collecting them. I have a lot of them. You can't see them right now because I'm using my laptop, but I have them on the back of my laptop. I, I have a bunch of funny little Sonic stickers. <laughs> If I ever get to see you at a convention, I will 100% buy some stickers from you. I have so many stickers. I'm, I'm going to have them at the symphony. Again, if anybody's at the, the Cleveland Symphony Show, I'll have a bunch of Sonic Symphony stickers. I'll be passing out. So. And thank yeah, you for If, you, if you're like, looking to get any there. Yeah, but yeah, good evening. Yeah. Oh. Alrighty. Uh, so let's see. I, yeah, our trigger has not been called up yet, so I will call him up now. Hey, trigger. Hello. <laughs> Hey, Chris, Kevin, good to see you both again. Natalie, pleasure. Uh, shoot, I don't think uh, I don't think I can hear you guys. Uh, or is oh, my yeah, we're here. Oh, yeah. We're here. Yeah, we're here. Okay, I'm just, uh, I'm just, uh, I guess I'm just pulling it down. Then it's all good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really I'm so bad at Discord. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, didn't, yeah, we all love Discord. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> uh, my my question for you, Natalie, is. When it comes to favorite Sonic characters, whether it's Riders or IDW, etc., which character would you have to say has the best backstory and how so? Oh, that's a good question. I see, like, I feel like it's a cop out answer, but I want to say Shadow. Um, I think Knuckles also um, would love to see some of his background explored a little more, but I, I think it's, it's a really cool and really unique story. Um, I'm, I'm really interested to see. Like, for example, the, the third Sonic movie, how they do Shadow, because I think he's got such a cool and really intricate background that, like, the games have explored a lot. But other than the games, hasn't really been explored. You know, like, we don't... It hasn't really been talked a lot in the comics, um, and then it hasn't really been talked about, obviously, in the movies or anything yet. Um, so I'd be interested to see how that sort of interpretation of it works out, since, since they are so different from the games, uh, the movies. Um, but I, I would say Shadow. It feels like a cop-out answer, but... <laughs> In, in terms mean, of my favorite, like, <laughs> I mean that's valid. Like a lot of people love Shadow because of his background. Like you know, a, having a hedgehog that's fifty years old, like that's a whole like different ballpark altogether. So yeah, it's just such a such a really cool story, really unique. Um, and I like the way the way it affects like his current character, obviously, and kind of see how that affects the way other people interact with him. I always think that's really. Unique. Oh yeah, and that that makes a lot of sense because, like, you know, compared to now, then back then, like, fifty years, like, he's changed a whole lot, yeah. and yeah. yeah, like, it's it's always good to see like a character change over time with their story. But yeah, yeah I you know, hands down, I I can't disagree with Shadow. Like, hands down, best backstory. <laughs> All righty, well, that's my question answered. Thank you. That's a good one. Good day. Good day. All right. Uh, thank you for that question, Trevor. Uh, Chris, would you like to call the next person? All right. Now we are on to the next round. Let's bring up Radar. Come on up, Radar. Welcome back, Radar. Oh, I have back. your turn. Yes. yes. Hello. Hold on. I got to let my cat into the room. He's trying to bring. Oh, oh okay. Oh. That's, that's totally fine. Oh. All right. I'm back. He's, <laughs> he's running around now. He might make an appearance. We'll see. You, yeah. Are you sure you can say he's running around at the speed of sound back there? Yeah. <laughs> it's all right, out there. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. Uh, yeah, hello, <laughs> I've returned, and I I jumbled between three different questions I wanted to ask, but I finally settled on one, just because it, it was brought up to my attention in this little, this little thing I have written down at the moment. Um, let's let's delve into Scrapnik Island for a little bit, because I know, <laughs> Natalie, that you provided some little characters that were uh, featured in the yeah. island's residence. Um, yeah. you, you went out of your way to create Michael, Freddy, Hottie, and Melissa that featured in the, uh, the miniseries. Sorry, I know all their names. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> But there was one from your concept art that you revealed on Twitter that didn't 
as far as I'm aware, didn't make it into the miniseries. And that was Eddie, who was your egg pawn, motobug, spinner, crab meat, scrap nick sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, again, <laughs> sorry, I just, know, I just know the ins and outs. Yeah. I love scrap nick Island so much. One of my oh, no, I'm glad, I'm glad. I love scrap nick Island. miniseries. Um, and I just wanted to ask exactly, was there a reason why Eddie didn't get featured? Or was there like so many scrap nicks that were... Um, you know, given to Jack and Natalie, uh, Nat number two, uh, Natalie Fordrain. Um, yeah, so uh, were there so many that could only be like chosen to be featured? I, I was just yeah, curious. So, that was um, one that was, you know, he didn't get featured. Yeah, yeah, no. So, uh, Jack Lawrence obviously did all, all of the interior art for that and all the pencils. Um, him and Natalie, the other Natalie, um, worked very closely to kind of make sure that they had consistencies between their work. Um, so like when she was doing covers and stuff to make sure they were using the same kind of scrap neck. Um, so we have a group chat with all of the IDW people. And I remember Natalie and Jack had kind of just put a filler out there to be like, Hey, we're looking for, again, background characters designs for, for scrap neck Island. Um, if anybody wants to design some scrap necks. Um, and so I kind of whipped those all out in an afternoon and I put them in there. The names that were just silly little things that I thought of. Um, and put them in there. Everybody was naming them. Um, and so I, I submitted those ones. Um, obviously, it was entirely up to the discretion of like Jack and Natalie to like pick and choose who got in. Um, they had their own scrap necks that they also designed. So like, obviously, they, they were using ours to kind of fill in those pieces that they hadn't got to yet. Um, so I never expected them to be used. I honestly didn't even expect that many of mine to be used. Um, they were never made as like here they are, here's an official design, this is a scrap nick, here you go. It was more so like, here's designs if you want to use them and you need more designs or inspiration. Um, so it was never like a super serious thing. Um, it was more so just like, here's my ideas if you want to use them. Um, so in terms of like Eddie, the one I designed that didn't get chosen, um, I guess Jack just chose not to include him in. <laughs> I, I do think of all of my designs, he was the weakest. Sorry, Eddie. Um, but <laughs> I, I, I think the other ones were designed. Yeah, <laughs> no, I honestly, I honestly thought that there was because a lot of the scrap mix were merely a classic um, bad mix, yeah. whereas Eddie was, you know, comprised of an egg pawn, which is a more modern bad. And that mix, might so have I also been why why he didn't get in. Yeah, you know, maybe but, maybe they were like, yeah, I don't know about that. But, well, to be fair, I also look back at Scrap Nick Island to see that there's also. Um, an egg carrier made robot that was featured as a scrap right. nickel. I it really was probably just a, like a pick and choose thing that Jack did. Yeah, um, my guess is it was just a pick and choose, and Jack just didn't choose that one or didn't get around to it, or maybe it was chosen, but there was a revision along the way that got him covered or changed or something. So well, <laughs> I'm just really excited that some of the ones I designed got in. <laughs> yeah, no, and you know, yeah, uh, uh, Hottie there, uh, he was one of the, he was one of the. So they were one of the first Scrapniks to be seen right behind Sonic as soon as he woke up. So I feel like that's like that's an like one of the first Scrapniks you see. It was a silhouette, but still like you know, <laughs> you know, honor upon you. Know, you I, need to, really. I need to ask Jack for because Jack uh, inks his pages traditionally, so he's got the traditional pages. I'm like, man, I need oh, to ask him for something. That'd <laughs> be cool. I love, also, I like uh, Carlisle and Melissa. I think they're. The <laughs> And then also, yeah, uh, uh, in regards to Scrapnik, um, your cover, cover B for issue two, like that is one of my favorite covers of yours just because of how impactful it was. Because we all thought initially Scrapnik Island was mainly about Mecha Knuckles returning from Advance. But no, your cover surprised us all. And it was all about Mecha Sonic Mark II. Like your cover. I, I had was no a very idea. Big thing. I had no idea that my cover was going to be the reveal of Mecha Sonic. I wasn't told that. Um, so I knew from the beginning that Mecha Sonic was good. But also when they started promoting it, they weren't talking about it. So I knew that they were trying to like keep it on the down low, obviously, um, at the time. But when I was designing the cover, part of the story when I was giving the outline for it was obviously talking about Mecha Sonic. And I was like, well, I want to draw Mecha Sonic. So, and I pitched a bunch of, I actually pitched like 16 different cover ideas or something for that one. And they chose that one. Um, so I, I didn't know going into it because everybody else's covers, and I didn't know this at the time, were specifically trying not to show Mecha Sonic because they didn't want to tease him yet. <laughs> um, but the editors chose that one and went with it. So I, I didn't know he was going to be the reveal. I'm really excited that he was. <laughs> but I, I didn't know that cover was going to be like, here. <laughs> 
that, that was a place. Like, it really surprised us all, especially for me, because I was at Comic Con when they were first revealing Scrapnik when Daniel yeah, was there. I, saw the, was like, I was in a stream. I was like, oh, they showed it. It was just, oh, Mecha Knuckles and then this new E series. There was Sigma, but nothing about Mecha Sonic Mark II. Like that, again, another honor upon you. Thank you so much for all the work you've done. You're amazing. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for answering awesome. my question. Now, I've got to go because I need to eat, but it was awesome getting to talk with you, really. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hope you have a good day. Take so care, long, reader. folks. We. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm sure. What, what was your decision to bring back uh, Metatronic uh, Mark II? Because he hadn't been seeing Tetronic and Knuckles, so that surprised a lot of us when he showed up in Scrapnik Island. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's he's definitely like a fan favorite robot. I've seen a lot of people talk about about him as a bad Nick. You know, a lot of people have wanted to see him again or see people talk about him. Because I mean, other than his game appearance, like there's not really been a lot. He was an Archie Sonic for like a little bit. Um, but he, he really hasn't been in a lot recently. That's, that's on Dan, Danny, Daniel Barnes for bringing him back and all the, all the other ones, but I'm, I'm glad he got him through. I'm glad Sega said yes to it. (laughs) It was okay with it all. Alrighty. Alrighty. Um, Let's see. I, I was going to call on Luna the cap and then they put their their, their, their hand down. Uh, I'll call up uh, CJ Destroyer again. Hey, welcome back. CJ. Welcome back. I have returned. (laughs) Uh, I actually wanted to ask something, uh, really cool because, uh, I've done this like, like lately. Uh, have you ever, um, collected any vintage Sonic stuff or anything like <laughs> I, I know, I've got my, like, part of my Sonic collection. I do have a few older things. Um, I've got some really old plushies. Let me see if I can grab them. He's like up above here. Hold on. Uh, if nice. I, like, close nice. the I wish I could show, but I can't, I can't do the face thingy. Got this one. I like him. He's like a hey, 1992 hey, song. There we go. Oh, I, actually, I, I got a really creepy got one that's up there from uh, 1998, but it's still using the classic Sonic design. So it's like the year that Adventure came out, but it's still the classic oh, Sonic. That's He's awesome. got like the scariest looking eyes. He's so funny. <laughs> I can't bring him down. <laughs> Uh, he's like got yeah. a bunch of other Sonic plushes on top of him, so he's like a load bearing Sonic. I can't remove him. That's crazy because I yeah, actually I've, I've, been trying recently to, <laughs> I've been trying recently to get stuff from like the adventure era. Um, but I, I do have a lot of the random classic things. I've got like Burger King. Ah, ah, <laughs> the old classic toys. Yeah, the classic one. Yeah. I've got one of oh, the yeah. uh, Cards. <laughs> that, yeah, that just like classics. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. They're they're super fun to collect. Dang. I I wish I, I could show you more of my stuff. collection, but uh, I can't do <laughs> facing somehow. But I I did get the the Tommy one, the Tommy plush you just showed recently. Yeah. So, so that's cool. They're so now so, so now I'm on the mm. search for the soap shoes, which is. Oh god! <laughs> I have the soap shoe figure. I have the the Joyride Sonic and Shot over here, but I don't have plushie. One day, yeah, I bet everybody else has a plushie. Wants to trade a paint. Yeah. <laughs> anybody, anybody, want, if anybody wants to give me a soap shoe Sonic plushie? Please, plush, please, give original me. art. I'm begging. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's awesome. I I I, no, I, I love collecting collecting stuff. Yeah, that's, nice. that's that's part of my hobby to do nowadays. Yeah. Just going. And that's what like I do when I don't draw. Is looking for. for awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Well, uh, I'm done here. Uh, Hopefully, right, that answered your question there. Yeah, he's got three spikes on. Oh, we we'll, we'll, <laughs> we have to do uh, we have to do like a, a plush cam on that somehow. Oh yeah, I know my scary <laughs> son. I can't take him down. He's so scary. Oh, <laughs> yikes. It's so right. funny. Before we bring up the next person, we do have a text question. Let's see. Uh, yeah, from VG Jedi, they asked, but is there any more inspirations to your issue 59B cover other than just referencing the Renaissance art? Um, obviously, mainly Renaissance art. <laughs> um, the specific <laughs> inspiration, I know I've mentioned this like on my social media, so most people know it, um, is the Fallen Angel painting of Lucifer. Um, right. Just because I thought that was a, a good juxtaposition with Shadow, um, you know, talking about his character, and obviously with all the androids, I thought I thought it would work well. 
Um, in terms of like references specifically, it was just kind of a hodgepodge of a bunch of different Renaissance or like Enlightenment era. Um, I used a lot of Rembrandt paintings as as inspiration. Um, from Leonardo, obviously. Um, there wasn't really a whole lot in terms of like specifics. I was kind of just drawing from everything. Um, New century color palette. Um, once I kind of had the idea and drew it out, I kind of just went with it and kind of stopped obviously looking at everything else and just kind of tried to turn it into its own thing. I didn't want it to like take too much specific draw from, from other things. Um, I wanted to make sure it was in and of itself, but yeah, it was, it was very much a hodgepodge of <laughs> a lot of classical paintings. Very nice. Okay. That is your question. Are we here in good? Uh, Kevin? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, question. Do you want to call up the next audience member? Yep. How about we bring up two X smiles once again? Come on up. Hey, welcome Ooh, back. That's a lot of merch Hello. there and cookies. Hello. Hey, what's your question? Uh, yes. Uh, so I've actually been recently like into got into like a, a project kind of thing, but I've been dealing with like procrastination or like I guess like kind of burnout. So I was wondering, as somebody who's worked in like the industry for like a while now, how do you yeah. deal with that kind of stuff dealing with work? Yeah. Um, I talked about burnout a little bit earlier, but I guess the main like reiteration in terms of like staying motivated, um, making sure you're working on other projects that aren't just that one so that you have something to kind of like take a break from it. Um, something that isn't as important, something that's easy that you can mess up and have fun with. Um, I definitely recommend mm -hmm. like whatever you're watching or listening to while you're drawing, if that is something you do, I think can heavily influence um, the work you do and the motivation. Um, Sometimes I'll put on documentaries. I watch a lot of crime documentaries while I'm working <laughs> um, and then like oh. play music and stuff while I'm working. So like finding new like artists that I enjoy that I can just like listen to um, is to help me a lot or putting on movies. Um, sometimes you'll see that the vibe is like, I need to put on something that I know so that I don't distract myself. Other times you're like, I need to put on something new so that I can feel new, like invigorated and inspired. Um, that's like personally like while I'm actually working on something, how I stay inspired is it usually heavily depends on like whatever whatever's going in my ears while I'm working. <laughs> if that makes oh, okay. sense. Well uh um, I've also thank you so much again for your inspiration for me. Uh I hope you have a good day. Yeah, I appreciate it. All right. So thank you for that question. Uh two X Mom. Uh let's see. I their name cuts off the 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 wonder I, I can't read the next the wonderful. Name. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 have another question, I'll call him back up. Back up. Hello, the Hello. wonderful child, Master. Hey, welcome back. Hello, it is I. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm, I'm the Sasquatch. I'm back once again. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, what's your question? Uh, I, I'll, I'll try and make this one a, a bit, uh, I, I want to say fun. Uh, your yeah. favorite Sonic character and the genre they would listen to. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that is, <laughs> that's not me. That's is my favorite Sonic. I think we know what he listens. Like it'd be like rock. <laughs> like, like that's that's a normal answer. <laughs> like, like what would like what would like Surge listen to? <laughs> I feel like uh, it'd be like really bad dubstep. <laughs> I I'd say it's like heavy metal, probably. Yeah, like. Like you just don't understand it like I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you're not listening I, I to the like words. They're just like rah, 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 rah. yeah. That's what I think. It's That's just it's just loud noise and yeah, what? it's just loud noise and just breaking speakers, <laughs> you know. That's what I think. I think Serge would listen to the most like loud, like earphone breaking, like electricity sounds on re hundred percent volume. <laughs> <laughs> Surge is a, is a Skrillex fan confirmed. <laughs> so on a Skrillex pick right now. <laughs> but yeah, that's that was the question I wanted to ask. So All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. So it looks like we have one more hand raised. So of course, would you like uh, I I'll call up that uh that 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 last person? Uh, uh, yeah. And actually, actually that other person raised their hand. hand up. They, I don't yeah, know if they're part of this. Yeah, my fish. Yeah, I can't even pronounce it. Is it uh, gives you good idea, my fish eats. Yeah, I don't had that up before, but hey, hey, welcome. Oh, hi. Hello. 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 
good to talk to you again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have just kind of a fun question. Uh, yeah. What was your reaction to Sonic Shadow Generations? <laughs> I so like I know a lot of people on Twitter I'm sure saw that it was actually like leaked a day early in terms of like they were like this is going to get announced and so I was like mm, you know always suspicious of any leaks or anybody claiming anything but I I saw that I figured they were doing a generations remaster it feels appropriate um I had my friends over and we were just like watching YouTube videos and then like the live stream of the uh was it announced on the game the game or whatever the live stream was that it was announced on um popped up and i was like oh yeah they're supposed to be announcing a, th- a sonic thing today we should like click on it and see where they are and we clicked on it and it was like the part where sonic and shadow were like crossing yeah. over and then it went to little shadows and i was like go back go back i was, I was in class i almost the exact same thing happened to me i, I tapped like, in it's like you can't just do that yeah. i wasn't watching i wasn't ready Oh, I'm, oh I'm really excited for it. I think it looks really cool. I'm really interested to see how, how they do the Shadow campaign, or if anything changes in Sonic's campaign. Like, I'd be interested to see if they have any, like, cutscenes of the, like, them actually interacting or anything, other than, like, they just, like, throw a Shadow story in there, kind of like what front, the Frontiers DLC, or, sorry, no, the Forces DLC. Um, so I'd be interested to see if they have any actual, like, changes to generation story as it is. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really interested. To- oh, yeah, I'm I, I I was yeah, Shadow's one of my favorites. So I clicked you know, on the stream right when it was Shadow was on screen. I was like, no wait, go back a second. I'm I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, excited for some I'm I'm like to call it the year of shadow as some oh, other yeah. people do. <laughs> oh yeah. Definitely definitely the year of shadow. <laughs> I hope he's in the writer's arc, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys very much. Okay. All right, and now we have our last hand raid. Uh, a a gamer. Uh, at one. Uh, um, well, no. uh, hey, gamer, you still want to ask your question? Yeah, yeah. I think. I- no. Nope. <laughs> I actually put them back. Oh. Let's get him back a bit. Oh, right. There we <laughs> go. There we go. Oh, yeah. No. yeah. I actually had one question I was going to ask. Yeah. Since we've seen Mark 2 Mecha Sonic, what would happen if Mark 1 Son- Metal Sonic Mecha Sonic had, in, like, had his own story? For example, the silver one. I think that would be really fun. I think that would be really cool. I, again, not involved in any of the Scrapnik like, writing stuff. Um, I, I, I would love to see... We saw him in the Witcher Gang comic. We did, yeah. We saw, we saw him briefly. Yeah. I know, I know that was like more so a cameo than anything else. Like, I don't think it was supposed to mean anything. <laughs> um, but that doesn't Wait, mean that a writer can't reiterate it um, me. and turn it into. I think that would be really cool and really neat to see what they. Do. Yeah. I, I think he's a really, a really interesting design, a really interesting character. Um, I would love to see kind of how they portray him in a in a like modern yeah. sense. Any any of the characters that interact with him, especially like the the current Scrapnik Island characters. I think I think it would be interesting to see. So their personalities clashed with with any other mm-hmm. of the like mecha sonics or metal sonics or anything i would i would love to see that <laughs> in the yeah. i think i think that would be really cool i don't know if they would get along or not <laughs> they would all hate each other <laughs> Time will do. Mm. all right did that answer your question okay there at yeah. gamer yep and i'm gonna get going now because i get to do all right, have a good day all right you too thanks Take care. All right. It looks like that's all of our questions. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say, Natalie, before we wrap up the Q and A? Well, that's about it. My cat's trying to break out the window. Oh, jeez. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's like playing with the blinds right now. <laughs> He's also like, hey, hey. Maybe he has a question. Let me shut. I'll go get up. I like, bite everybody. Oh, oh my god! That's a funny way to end it all. <laughs> This is Cowboy. Hey. Oh, hey. Oh, I want to say hi. Hi. Here it comes. Kitty <laughs> cameo. No, my studio buddy. This is my coworker. He actually writes all of the IDW. He's actually, this is Evan Stanley and also Daniel. And also. 
Hey, hey, Cat's not a Debbie fan. There we go. I know. Other, other than, other than that, little, little break. Um, I don't know. It was a lot of fun. Um, if anybody ever, you know, you got any questions that pop up about questions about the comic industry, or if anybody ever wants like portfolio tips or anything, um, I've got my email linked in all of the bios and my social media. So definitely don't be afraid to reach out. Um, I will not respond to DMS probably on any social media just cause I get too many and I don't check them. Um, but email me if you ever want to get a hold of me, I'll, I'll try my best to answer back <laughs> uh, about or questions or anything. But yeah, it was, this was really fun. I had a, I had a good time and hopefully answered everybody's questions to, to the best of my ability and, and what they were hoping. <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah. you for having me. Yeah, well, thank, thank you very, very much, Natalie, for coming. And thank you, everybody, coming for the Q&A. And thank you, Chris, for co-hosting. And, no problem. Uh, yeah, and our next panel is tomorrow at the uh, Ask Babylon Road. Hey, it's hey, been a while since we've seen it. That'll be tomorrow at 7 p.m. So we'll mm-hmm. see you all there. Okay. Bye, everyone.